Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, .NET Conf. Uh, my name is Adrian Hall. I'm the program manager for Azure Mobile. And today, we're going to be taking you through Azure Mobile apps. And we're going to go beyond the basics. So what are we going to be covering here? Um, first of all, I'm going to go quickly through building and publishing an Azure Mobile app. And then we're going to deep dive into how to make line of business apps for, uh, for mobile apps. So cloud-enabled line of business apps. And that includes taking Azure AD, uh, which you've probably already connected to your uh, corporate AD infrastructure, and adding that authentication mechanism to your mobile back end. Then we're going to add AD authentication to your mobile app. And finally, we're going to be covering two, um, two topics. Um, the first of one is personalizing a, a table endpoint. And then we'll go into some troubleshooting questions. Along the way, please do um, ask questions. Uh, we are uh, we're going to have them pop up here, and I'll cover them uh, as I uh, as I get time. So, what are we not covering? We're not going to be covering the basic creation of a mobile app. Uh, we're not going to be covering deployment of a SQL Azure database, and we're not going to be covering the basic Xamarin Forms apps. There are excellent quick starts available. Uh, on Azure.com for the mobile app and SQL Azure database, and on Xamarin.com for the Xamarin Forms app. So we're not going to be covering those uh, topics. So let's dive right in, and I'm going to create a mobile ASP.NET app. Uh, everything here is, um, is going to be C-sharp.net, uh, but uh, just be aware that if you, uh, if you really want to concentrate on uh, Xamarin and you just want to uh, focus on the um, the capabilities of the back end. We do have uh, easier no code capabilities available. So I'm just going to log into my um, really. <laughs> I'm going to ah uh, uh, the perils of live coding um, <laughs> typing straight. Uh, I'm just going to log into my Azure.com uh, site and the portal. And you'll be able to see here that I've already created a .NET Conf um, uh, website. Now, how did I do that? I clicked on this big plus sign. I searched for mobile app. And the very, very first setting is, if I can just uh, find it, is there's mobile app. So, so you really want to. Um, click on this mobile app. Don't really don't do mobile service. That's uh, it's no longer preview. It's actually deprecated, um, and you can't. If you're a new customer, you cannot actually create those. Once I've uh, done that, I'm going to come into my Solution Explorer in Visual Studio, and I just created this application through the file add a new project. And there is, in the cloud environment, there is an Azure mobile app there. Now, this does require the Azure SDK. And make sure that you are always on the latest version of the Azure SDK. Right now, that's version 2.9. Uh, that will give you these capabilities. And that is literally all I have done to this. Now, to publish this, this is really kind of uh, uh, easy. But there are a couple of gotchas that you need to be aware of. First of all. We have a capability within the Azure portal called Easy Tables. And that's really where the quick starts take you. So if you've already done the quick start, you've created your mobile app, and you've deployed Easy Tables, you'll want to wipe out that Easy Table configuration before you publish this. Um, that's easily done through here. So I'm just, I just right clicked on the project, and I clicked on Publish. I'm going to select my Azure App Service. I'm going to need to re-enter my credentials. Um, it times out after a while. Um, and I obviously can't type today. Always a wonderful sign. There we go. Um, once you've authenticated, it will refresh the subscriptions. If you've got multiple subscriptions, you'll see all your subscriptions here. I only have my MSDN um, subscription that comes with Visual Studio Enterprise. So I'm, I'm going to uh, select that one. And here's my conference. Uh, resource group, and there's my app service. So I can click on OK. Now, once you've got that uh, done, it will actually fill in an awful lot of the information for you. It pulls this down. 
Um, there are a couple of alternatives, FTP, but the web deploy uses port 433, so that really gets by most firewalls that are out there. Um, so you can uh, deploy easily. Next one, click on Next, because there's some real interesting options here. The first one is the file for publish options. If you have, in, if you have uh, implemented easy tables and now you are swapping over to ASP.NET, ensure you click the Remove Additional Files at Destination. So that will be a requirement. And if you are doing um, code-first migration, so uh, at the end of the day, the mobile app is an ASP.NET with Entity Framework built in. And that means that you have to deal with Entity Framework migrations. If you have done a migration, you'll be able to check this box, and uh, it will actually execute for you on the back end. So now you can click on Next, and now you can click on Publish. Uh, that's how you uh, publish a site. We want to go a bit deeper, though. So first of all, some, some notes. Um, Azure ASP.NET Mobile Apps uses Entity Framework. Make sure you deal with the EF migrations. I mentioned that. Um, really, the right-click publish is for development. If you are using, if you are doing a production deployment, you probably want to set up a production staging environment. There is a feature on uh, Azure App Service called Slots, uh, and it's available in the All Settings uh, pane. I'll uh, just show that off. So I'm just going to go back to my main page, and I'm going to go into my uh, .NET Conf um, site. And I'm in all settings. And down near the bottom, there is deployment slots. And this allows you to create that staging slot. So you have your production slot, and you have your staging slot. What you're going to do is use continuous deployment against the staging slot. So then you can test your staging to make sure that the migration took hold, that your mobile apps still work with the staging site. And then you can do the swap slot uh, to swap it into production. That way, your production environment is not affected as you are making sure that your staging site is working. If you have a problem, uh, and as I said, the specific problem is easy tables being transitioned to an ASP.NET application. Make sure you clear all the files. It's an option under Settings in the Publish dialog. And be aware that when you publish, we've got to shut down the old site, and we've got to bring the new site up and do the connection to the, uh, to the back end uh, database. So there is a startup cost. What happens, and it should have just happened here, is you will always get a website coming up once it's been published properly. Uh, even if you don't have a home site, as I don't in this version, um, you're always going to have something, that a web server, uh, sorry, a web page that actually pops up. So make sure that you wait for that before you start testing your back end, because that's your indication that it's actually published properly. So let's go on to Azure AD authentication. Azure App Service makes this really drop dead simple for you to do. I'm going to go back to my, um, my uh, Azure portal here. And I'm in, as you will uh, no doubt remember, my ASP.NET application. So this is the Azure App Service. It's my mobile app. Under Features, there is a whole bunch of things. But the one that I'm going to be concentrating on here is the authentication and authorization site. I can click on this, and it's normally turned off. I don't have any authentication. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on authentication. And this actually gives you a whole bunch of information. You can configure Azure AD, which we'll do in a moment, Facebook, Google, Twitter, or Microsoft accounts. Now, the four social uh, accounts, you're going to have to go somewhere else to actually pull a client ID and client secret to configure the application. In the Azure Active Directory case, you're not. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Azure Active Directory, and we've implemented an easy way of getting this configured. Click on Express, and scroll down a bit, and you'll notice it's going to create a new AD app. Now, if you, ha if you are configuring a staging slot, for example, you may want to select an existing AD app so that your production and staging slots have the same, um, same environment. I'm going to create a new one. And it's going to give me a name. In the Azure AD part of the portal, this is going to appear. I'm going to click on OK. 
that's all I need to do. Literally, that is configuring the Azure AD to use so that my website can use it. The final thing that I'm going to do is up here in the action to take when request is not authenticated. Now, a lot of people mistakenly say, well, that's the authentication that I want to use. This is really a distinction between do you want the app service to handle authentication for you, or do you want your app to control the authentication? Um, now, most people have a have a, uh, a number of pages that they don't want authenticated. For example, your home page, you might want to be not authenticated. Um, you might have a configuration API that you want to be not com not uh, authenticated because it passes information down to your mobile app about the uh, uh, about the server. So inevitably, when you're doing a mobile app, you want to say allow the request. This doesn't say that authentication is turned off. This just says that your app, your mobile app, is controlling whether a page is authenticated or not, rather than the app service assuming that every single page needs to be authenticated. Once you've done that, click on Save. And that will, that will uh, save the uh, options. So a couple of authentication tips for you. Um, we're going to be implementing what we call server flow. Now, server flow is great for web apps, and it's also great when you're doing a mobile app and you just want authentication quickly, but you're going to handle the more complicated scenarios around authentication later on. We recommend for production mobile apps that you use a client authentication. Now, that means that, for example, if you are wanting your client to be authenticated with Facebook, you use the Facebook SDK to authenticate your user in your mobile app, and then you pass the token that you get back from the Facebook SDK to the mobile backend, and it will actually swap it for a mobile, so mobile apps um, token so that you can then continue to use it. The second thing is dealing with the refresh problem. Um, refresh tokens are an interesting topic. Basically, we use a token-based authentication mechanism. That means that you authenticate through an OAuth uh, flow, and you get a token back. Now, that token has an expiry time. Uh, what happens when your mobile app moves beyond that expiry time? And the answer is, is that most environments, uh, MSA and Twitter being the, 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 the catch-ups uh, to here, they don't have this facility, um, but most of the others have a refresh token. And that's something that you can request during your, your authentication process. You get a refresh token back. And then when you time out, you submit the refresh token to get a new token back. So you need to deal with this refresh problem because you are going to bump into expiry times. And it's generally, you know, it could be a day, it could be a month, it could be a week. We don't know. It could be an hour, it could be a minute. Um, you just don't know when that, uh, when that expiry time is going to hit. So deal with this problem up front. And finally, you can test the authentication server flow by yourself. So once you've set it, set it up, and we can actually try this out now, um, I'm going to go to slash dot auth slash login slash AAD. And it's actually going to redirect me to, to the login page. Now, I've already logged in here but since I've been testing this app. So I can, I've successfully logged in. Now, I can go to my endpoint, and here's my big token. Let's just get rid of, uh, rid of that. It's a huge token. And go to https ahol.net.net.conf, and there's my original. And I just take the slash dot auth, and I go slash me. And this gives me a JSON document that describes all the claims that we made. So for example, I know that my email address is photoadrianoutlook.com. I know my, my name is Adrian Hall. And I know where I'm coming from in terms of the identity provider. I know who actually identified it. So that's how you test the auth flow. Um, go to slash dot auth slash login slash provider, and it's Facebook, uh, Twitter, Google. Uh, Microsoft account or AAD, uh, the tokens for the provider, and go through the auth flow and then 
take a look at the information with slash dot off slash me. So next I'm going to go over to some coding. And uh, this really comes down to how do I cross-platform add this information in? So I've got, I'm going to, I'm going to take the uh, back end out of the way. I've actually got a Xamarin Forms app. Now, after I installed the Xamarin, um, the Xamarin plugin for Visual Studio, I just went in and I did add new project to this same project. And down in the, where is it, uh, the, uh, the Windows, Visual C Sharp, cross-platform, there we go. In the cross-platform, there is a Xamarin Forms for Universal Windows, Android, and iOS. Um, and that's the project that I created. I, now, I said I wasn't going to do a uh, create the, the, the whole app, but I am going to do a little bit. So the first thing is, is I need to actually, the, there are three parts to this. First of all, there is the portable uh, library. Now, that is, a, that is a common code to all three platforms. So when I compile this on the relevant platform, I'm going to say I want the iOS version, or I want the Android version, or I want the UWP version. It's going to automatically compile the, uh, the, the shared code, and then it's going to compile the UWP version. It's going to put them together to produce your app. So it, within, the, within the capabilities of the, uh, of, of the uh, app, I want to be able to produce this login page. So this, this uh, application right now, it doesn't do any authentication. It's just your basic to-do list that you open up and you've got to do. And it's shared across everybody. And I want to be a bit more prescriptive about it. So I want to be able to provide authentication. And when the user is authenticated, I want them to see their own to-do list. I don't want them to see everybody's to-do list. Now to do the authentication piece, unfortunately, authentication is platform-specific code. Every single platform implements how to deal with the UI slightly differently. So we need to deal with that. The, what we're going to do is we're going to use a Xamarin Forms capability called dependency service. Now, dependency service says, take an interface, take a .NET, a, a C -sharp .NET interface, and define that. And then in each of your platform uh, projects, define an implementation of that interface. And then in your common code, you're going to look up that interface, find out the, the concrete uh, implementation of it, and then, and then use that. So first of all, in my services, I've, I've already created a service locator singleton here. Um, I'm going to add a new item. I'm going to add an interface, and I'm going to call it iLoginProvider. Now, iLoginProvider, it, uh, it requires an async login async, and I'm going to pass in the mobile service client that I'm using. Async would be good. And in addition to that, I'm going to provide a logout async. And I'm just going to uh, do the, uh, the, the, use all the helpers, so I bring in my right library. And that's that done. Now, in the UWP project, I'm going to create a concrete example of that. So I'm going to add a class. And I'm going to call it UWP Login Provider. And that's going to implement my iLogin Provider. And I'm going to bring in the that capability as well, which should be just using dnc to do dot services. It should be there. Do I need to build it? Let me just build it. Probably the best way. OK. There we go. So now, come on. Quick actions, and I need to implement that. 
So my async task login async takes a mobile service client. And in the case of the uh, in the case of the UWP version, all I need to do is do a client.login async. But because I'm using AAD, I'm going to go mobile. Let me just bring in the uh, the appropriate uh, library here. Mobile service authentication provider, and there is a Windows Azure Active Directory. So, and I'm going to await for that since I'm, a, I'm on an async. And I can do the same thing for the logout async. Again, it's a mobile service client. Like that. So, so that will that will now um, do its job. Now, what about the iOS and the Android version? Well, let's take a look at the iOS version first. So here is my iOS version, and I mentioned that uh, dealing with the um, the the capabilities of the individual platforms is necessary. In the case of the iOS platform, I need to provide the root view. So here is my root view controller, and I've got to pass that in. So fortunately, that is a, a, a global variable in the, um, in the iOS version. And that's all I need to do. In the Droid version, there's something a bit different, because I actually need to initialize this with a context, and the context needs to be passed in. This is very common in Android Xamarin Forms applications, as you'll see. So I store the context in a local variable, and then in the login async, rather than passing the root view as I did in the iOS version, or nothing at all in the UWP version, I'm going to be passing in the context. Now, I do need to initialize that, and that is done in the main activity page. I'm waiting for this window to go away. Um, so I'll just scroll up, and you can see that what I do is I actually use the dependency service to, um, to actually get that. So that's how I, I, I initialize the, uh, the Android version. So that's the, once I've um, done that, then I need to switch back to my, uh, my Azure App Service. And excuse me while I, while I switch off the uh, Visual Studio and bring it back to get rid of that window. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make an easy method of uh, getting the to the login async and the logout async from my singleton. And this is a fairly common pattern where I use the singleton that I'm using for my mobile apps to access the things in the dependency service. Um, so let me just reload quickly. Go back into my project. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the class dependency service. So here's my Azure App Service class. And what I've done is I've created login async and login logout async. Now, instead of throwing a nice exception, I'm going to use var lp equals. Now, the dependency service is a um, is a singleton itself, and I'm going to get the implementation of iLoginProvider. And then I'm going to call on that. I'm going to await lp.loginAsync, and you can see that that's, uh, that's completed for us. And similarly, in the logout async, I'm going to get the concrete implementation of I login provider, and I'm going to await lp.logout async. Now, there is one thing I forgot to do, and I apologize for that. In the, if I look in the iOS version, you can see this assembly at the top. Now, what that is doing is that is registering this class as being the concrete implementation of 
the um, of the iLogin provider with the uh, dependency service. So what I need to do is I need to go down into the UWP version of this, and at the top, I need to. Oops. Just make sure I'm putting. Yeah, it's at the uh, it's at the namespace level. I'm going to put that there, and instead of iOS there, I'm going to say this is the UWP version. And Xamarin Forms will take that dependency and it will say this is the concrete version of the iLogin provider. Then my Azure App Service will actually it, that actually implements that. Um, it will actually when I do the dependency service dot get if I'm running on. Uh, UWP, it will actually uh, get that uh, login async. Now, as I mentioned, I would normally implement this with uh, ADAL library or if the Facebook SDK if I was doing Facebook authentication. So whichever one you use, and then I would do, do the swap over of the tokens. If you want to see that in action, please do refer to our developer guides that's on azure.com. Click on documentation, web and mobile, mobile apps, and under the developer section, they're, they are there. So some hints and tips. First of all, use a singleton in your mobile app to access Azure mobile apps. We store the authentication in that object. So if you don't use a singleton, you have to manage the state of the authentication. That's No one wants to do that. Um, I use a service locator class that's a simple uh, thing, much of the same API as the dependency service to locate my uh, singleton. And finally, login logout is platform dependent. Sometimes you need additional initialization, particularly Android. So use the dependency service to link in the platform dependent code. So let's go back to our table. And that's enough uh, uh, live coding uh, for right now. Um, now, how do we create a personal table? Well, in the regular to do list, you've got two fields. You've got a text field, and you've got an is it completed field. Um, and that's actually implemented in my to do item field. <laughs> and I've uh, got, uh, I'm just going to correct this because everyone's uh, pinging me. I forgot to make the interface public. Um, great point, guys. Thank you very much. It's uh, nice to have a, uh, uh, an awesome uh, uh, team there. So public interface, that should now make everything compile. Um, the last thing you want to do on stage is make, is do a whole debugging session. So let me just close some of these down so I can get to my to-do item again. So here's my to-do item. I've also included the fields. So let's get back to the back end. So here is my data object. Now, uh, a DTO, or data transfer object, is your model with some extra fields. And those fields are in, the, um, uh, are in this entity data class on the back end. On the front end, you're going to have to create them yourself. So just to show you how to do that, um, here is my portable class. Here is my models. Here's my to-do item. And you notice there's this Azure Mobile Apps fields. What I've done is I've created the fields for you. Um, there, and they should be included in any model on the front end. So you've got an ID. Now, in mobile apps, the ID is a string, not an int. Um, you've got a couple of date times that are used for incremental sync, and you've got a version which is used for conflict resolution. So you definitely need these four fields. There is a fifth field on the back end called deleted, and that's used for soft delete, which is um, basically if you have two devices, that are accessing the same data. So maybe you've got a tablet like I have here, and you've got a phone, and they're accessing the same data. If you delete on one, you want the other device to be notified that that has been deleted. So that is what we call soft delete. And that what, what happens is we mark something as deleted, and then the other device will download that mark, and it'll say, OK, you've deleted. Uh, I'll delete the record off the mobile device. And then later on, sometimes a week, two weeks later, you're going to clean up the database to remove all those soft delete marks. So that's my to-do item. Now, it is not uncommon for the two areas to be different. And you'll see that here. I've actually added an owner field. Now, that owner field does not get transferred 
to the back to the uh, mobile app or rather it does get transferred but it gets ignored that owner field is where we are going to where we're going to store the SID uh, the user ID in my controller I've got a con to do item controller now how do you what's the best way of creating controllers based on that model well you can actually do add a controller and within here there is an Azure mobile apps table controller that's something that the Azure SDK gives you and you can add it from there it will ask you for a model and a database context so I've got my to do item controller here I'm just gonna hide the solution explorer and the first thing I'm going to do is get a SID so a SID is a security ID it does not change no matter what you do on the authentication provider. So that SID is a unique combination for this application that you've defined and the user that is being uh, accessed from the back end. So uh, it does not fall if your user changes their email address in Facebook, for example, the SID remains the same. So this is a great way for storing data where you don't know whether the user can change their email address. Um, it's not associated with the user. So you look at it and it's just a string of digits. Um, it's a SID dot something, some X uh, string. So you can't tie the user to the SID. So it's, it's really hard to get information about a user. And that's a good thing given the number of uh, hacking attempts and, uh, uh, and data uh, uh, theft that's uh, going on. After that, they're each of the um, each of the functions that actually returns values has been adjusted. So, for example, in the original version, I had a return query, and that says return all the records. Now, instead of return all the records, I want return all the records where the owner matches the authenticated user. So here, I'm using a link query to augment the query that's being passed in to actually do that. And uh, the query that I'm doing is the item.owner, which is my owner field, matches the SID. In all the other cases, and you can see a lot of these, I'm going to be doing basically the same thing. So I'm going to look up the, uh, the ID that's being asked for the get single. I'm going to turn that into a queryable, and I'm going to make sure that the user has access. If the item does not exist, or the item is not owned by the user, then nothing is returned. For patching or um, deleting, there's a bit more to do. Um, I need to actually respond with appropriate uh, responses because I don't want to in inject a security concern where someone can tell that the item exists but can't get access to it because that gives them a vector for actual uh, uh, for actually doing things. So. Instead of that, that, I actually check to see whether the user can access the, um, uh, the uh, item. If the item is not there, then I return not found. If they can't get access, I return forbidden. Otherwise, I update the record. Similarly for the, um, uh, for the delete. Now, in the case of the post, again, I don't want someone injecting information in uh, arbitrarily even if they're authenticated so I'm actually going to explicitly set the owner field to the appropriate value in the back end and that prevents a lot of the security issues and that's all there is to producing um, this custom table now there are other ways of producing this custom table but this is the one where I I like where you're using link to actually get the, uh, the appropriate queries sent to the back end. Now that, I've, uh, now that I've got this, again, I can just publish and uh, get updated. But remember, if you change the model, you have to do a entity first, entity framework migration and upload that migration to get the extra field in. So always consider that as you're going to production. So a couple of um, mobile back end tips. Um, the first one I've got is secure the server and the client. Uh, don't rely on the server. Don't rely on the client. They're, they they really need uh, both. Um, but make sure, definitely validate all the fields coming from the client. You never know how you are going to get attacked. And a note: I 
I get a ton of questions on Stack Overflow on the MSDN forums about where's the app key? How can I secure my app with an app key? Don't use an app key. Um, app keys are inherently insecure. They are easily sniffed. And if you're relying on an app key to secure, so that, for example, a lot of people want to ensure that their mobile client is the only client accessing their, their uh, service, the app key is not the way to do it. Um, validate all the fields. So you don't know what information or who is sending. You can't assume that your mobile client is the one that's accessing your mobile back end. So make sure that you're validating all the fields, both on the client and the server. And invalid fields is very common to send a 400 bad request. You can, in the back end, you can just throw a new HTTP response message with a bad request um, piece. And finally, we did make some, um, uh, we did make a, a Xamarin involved um, uh, video on this. Uh, it's called Addressing the OWASP Mobile Security Threats. Um, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a great video and I uh, highly recommend as you move through your application development, do take security seriously and, and watch that video and, uh, uh, and deal with the threats. And with that, we've come to troubleshooting. I'm going to um, show off a, a bunch of um, uh, of troubleshooting techniques. The first one is how do I get logging? So a lot of times when uh, when someone asks us a question on Stack Overflow or on MSDM forums, we say, well, what does the log show? And the next question out of pretty much everyone's mouth is, well, how do I get that? There are two places. First of all, you need to actually enable logging in your back end. That is done the same way you do entity framework. And that is in the, in the database context that is uh, created. So here's my database context. And up here, I'm going to go this.database.log equals console.write. That is the entity framework method of, cre uh, of logging the queries that come back and forth. There we go. And I'm going to just save that, and I'm going to republish it. Now, as that is publishing, I'm also going to switch over to do the other part of this, which is you've got to configure the Azure App Service that you are using so that it actually listens to the logs. The way you do that is in diagnostic logs. And this is a fairly vanilla. There's my publication of working. So this is a fairly vanilla one. So I've got all the application logging turned off. You want to log to the file system for debugging. Click on on, turn it to verbose. Click on storage, click on detailed errors, click on failed requests. So now I've got everything turned on. And then click on save. Try again in a few moments. OK, must be still starting up. And of course, it would cease to work right now. Um, there are other ways of doing this, though. So for example, if you've got the uh, Cloud Explorer, which I don't have up there, but I have it in here. Where is my Cloud Explorer? There we go. So my Cloud Explorer is going to log in, and it's going to show all my web apps. So I can actually come into my ahall.net conf one. And I can click on log files, refresh properties. There we go. Come yeah, on. I can actually view the log files right from here. So there's my output. There we go. So I'm now connected to the log streaming service. So I am now viewing, within Visual Studio, I am viewing the logs from the Azure Logs. So let's see if I can turn these on again now. Nope, it doesn't look like it's going to. Yep. I'll try this again. There's the diagnostic logs on verbose storage. Oh, that's why. File system. Remember file system. <laughs> Click on Save. 
There we go. That's what was wrong. I was trying. If you choose storage, you're actually going to be dumping your logs into a blob storage on an Azure storage account. So that's the difference. I uh, uh, sorry for that. That's a mistake on my side. So make sure you choose file system in both cases and move on. And now the application logs, and you'll see that you get disconnected, but uh, you can actually um, go into the uh, Cloud Explorer again and you can click on View Streaming Logs. And it will appear in your output window. So there we go. That's, that's diagnostic logs. And you can cut and paste them from here, save them, and so on. The other thing that I want to, um, I want to show off is that you can actually attach a debugger. So um, I'm going to uh, pick a, an environment. So here in my to-do item controller, I'm going to do a, um, a, a breakpoint here. So I am going to actually uh, break on this. So um, the way that I tend to do this is I use Postman. Now I mentioned that, uh, yeah, we need to go. So my, my site is going to be https slash slash ahall.net conf.azurewebsites.net. And my endpoint is going to be tables.todo item. And I'm going to get, that's going to get all of the items. So it's going to hit that, uh, that auth. I am going to go into my, um, my website, and I'm going to go ahall.net conf um, dot auth login AAD. And that's going to give me a token. And now I'm going to go to slash dot auth slash me. And that's going to give me my ID token, which is goes along through to there. Control C. Now if I go into my um, if I go into my, um, my my postman, there are two fields that you need to do this. The first is zumo-api-version, and that must be set to the string 2.0.0. You will get an error if you do not include that header. It allows us to distinguish between people that are using the older mobile services v1 stuff from the v2 stuff. The other one is the xzumo auth, and that contains your authentication token. So I'm just going to cut and paste that in. Now I can click on Send. Authorization has been denied. And you can see I'm getting 401 here, so I can, I can see the uh, item. So let me just go back into here. Did I miss something? The other thing I can do is I can hit, I can go into the developer tools and go over to resources, and there will be a cookie. And there's my app, app service auth session. And it is wrong. Oh, come on. Huh. I can't copy that. There we go, copy. Um, let's try that. And if I, oh, I'm still getting on unauthorized. Um, I'm going to have to have a, a look at that uh, uh, afterwards. So, um, strange. This is what you get for live coding, I guess. Da -da 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 -da. Well, one of the things that I can do is I can actually take a look at the logs now. So let me go into the output, and you can see my application there. I cannot read this string. It is a very, very long string. Well, let's see if that works. OK. so. What we can actually do is we can compile the uh, site and get the token that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to my Solution Explorer. And let's go down to the UWP. 
and let's live on the wild side and rebuild the application. Make sure it works. I am da -da -da lb dot. Interesting. <laughs> so let's see if we can sort this out. So I need to add that. There's all sorts of things when you're doing live coding, let's just say. That. And let's try to sort this out. What did I do? So I did I login provider back up here. Azure App Service. Let's uh, rebuild that one. Nope. I login provider. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Public space, yeah. That uses all of that. And then Azure App Service should use this. Ah, live coding. It never works the way you want it to do. So that should be a login provider, login async. Ah. Nope. Ah, that's why. <laughs> you, you see it eventually. Um, I actually passed in the, uh, I called it with the mobile service client, and I wasn't passing the mobile service client in. So let's try and run that. Let's go to, here are all my other projects, so let's go to this one, let's deploy it. Um, that puts it in the start menu for you and registers it in on your local machine. And now let's run it. So here is my application. And I'm going to log in. And it's going to ask me for my username and password. I've already registered an account. Photo Adrian at Outlook.com. And I can type in my same password. <laughs> there we go. So we're in now, and I can now type in a new item and click on Save. So one of the things that I wanted to see was, because this is an offline sync version, hang on, uh, let me stop this. Here is the... And we'll float that so we can make it bigger. Ah, uh, you see I'm having a problem with SQLite. So, ah, uh, it looks like my, uh, my vain attempts at uh, doing uh, live coding are, uh, are uh, not, uh, not working here. So, uh, I've got some more work to do to find the uh, temporary keys and uh, and get a, a temporary area uh, set up. So, um, but let's just uh, let's just recap the uh, troubleshooting section. So first of all, turn on Entity Framework debug logging. It's easily done in the debug context. It's an Entity Framework uh, um, uh, element that will give you the ability to put out the um, the queries that are being used to communicate with the SQL backend in uh, the console. However, in order to capture that, 
you need to turn on diagnostic logging in the Azure portal. Set it to file system, not storage, file system. Um, you can also watch the logs directly from Visual Studio. You can also, if you want them in a completely separate window, if we go back to the uh, capabilities of the portal, under tools, there is a log stream option. And you can watch your logs from here as well. So you'll see it's the same thing. You're welcome. You're connected to the log streaming service, and you can go there. Um, you'll also be able to attach a debugger from Visual Studio, and I didn't finish showing that off. Um, I did show the where we get to the, um, and let me just uh, kill a few windows here, where we've set the, um, the to-do item. What I didn't show is how to connect the debugger. Um, there are a couple of things to do here. So first of all, here I am in the Cloud Explorer um, for my site, so which is under Web Apps. If I right click here and I say Attach Debugger, it's first of all, it is going to deploy a new version of your back end. That version of the back end is compiled with the debug options. Um, then it's going to restart your service with the remote debugger attached, and then it's going to communicate. So that's what's happening right here. So when I run my back end now, if I hit that uh, endpoint, it's actually going to um, it's actually going to hit it uh, uh, quite easily. So what I'm going to do is once that's uh, once that's done, I'm going to take this authorize off. Authorize is what makes the authentication work. Um, so I'm going to take that off so it uh, doesn't get in the way. Um, and then I'm going to redeploy it. So here's my back end. I'm going to publish. And this time, I'm going to go to the previous section. I'm going to deploy the any CPU version of the debug. So click on Next, Publish. So you can always go backwards into that. Um, and it's going to... Uh, uh, set up a, uh, a a capability. So, um, one of the uh, one of the viewers has just said, uh, Damien, you must put client as an argument. Yeah, great. I yeah, I noticed that. Thank you. Um, uh, it's uh, the, what what Damien was saying was here in the um, in the client in the portable. I had the iLogin provider had this mobile service client. In the Azure App Service version of this, as I scroll down, I hadn't put client here. So thank you very much, Damien. We, we figured that one out. So now, now that I've gotten rid of the, um, uh, I've published and I've got rid of the uh, authorization, I'm going to attach the debugger again. And I'm going to use Postman again to just send that I don't need auth. I just need the, the Zumo API version. If you've got unauthenticated requests, you can just do it directly. If you, you just need this Zumo API version. So use Postman, use Fiddler, uh, something like that. And if I send the request, it's going to reach that, um, uh, that checkpoint. And I can now explore this just as if I was debugging a local ASP.NET app. So this is an ASP.NET app running in Azure being debugged locally with your Visual Studio instance. This is, this is awesomely good stuff for uh, cloud development. And you can see I've got everything here. So I know what the model state is. I know what the, um, the, the URL is and so on. Uh, and I can see here my user. So if I'm, if I'm having um, uh, problems, I can see that I've actually, I've actually got that uh, request because I've got a Windows identity and I know who it is. Um, and I can see the claims. Uh, from here. So um, I actually don't have a, a, a user because I'm not authenticated, but that, was, that would be where it is, is in this user record. And you can cast that and so on. So I'm, I'm just going to prompt you again. Um, if you have questions about uh, this whole process, please, um, please do uh, type them into the window, and uh, we will get to them. So that's attaching um, a debugger. So where do you get this code? I am going to fix the code. Um, there's there's something uh, wrong with the uh, UWP version. I was I, I made the 
classic mistake of trying one version and then leaving the other one alone, thinking I could fix it. But there's, there's something there. Um, I am going to get the repaired code, and I'm going to put it on uh, this uh, GitHub repository so you can download uh, the code for yourself. Um, the Azure Mobile Apps SDKs, both the client SDKs, and we have more than .NET. We have iOS native, Android native, Apache uh, Cordova, UWP, and the Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android, etc. PCL versions. All of those SDKs, plus the ASP.NET SDK and the Node.js SDK, they're all open source. Um, we track them. They're in our Azure um, organization on GitHub. So you can look for Azure Mobile Apps there. Um, just type it into the search window, and uh, you'll see them. Um, the other thing is, is that we track issues there as well, so you can see all the development uh, going on. We also we're active on the uh, on, on the Twitterverse, so uh, if you really want to uh, get a hold of us, the team as a whole is on at Azure Mobile. If you want to get hold of the Xamarin team, they are on at Xamarin HQ. And if you want to get hold of me, I'm at Fizzy in the Hall. If you want some more uh, resources, I've just finished um, on Monday 30 days of Azure Mobile Apps. Uh, this takes you through all the requirements for Azure Mobile Apps, pretty much everything that you can do. It has code samples. It has walkthroughs of uh, everything from the very basic, how do you set up a local dev environment, all the way up to uh, how do you do uh, push to sync with uh, push notifications going through APNS and coming back to an Apache Cordova app. So uh, it's a it's a great um, series of, uh, uh, of blog posts. There, I really enjoyed uh, uh, writing them, and they're they're up available now, and the whole index is there. And it goes back to March. Um, we have a team blog. We'll be blogging more uh, now that I've uh, uh, done the uh, 30 days of Zoom. I'm going to be switching over to that. So. Uh, if you want more information, you want to, you have an idea for me to cover, then please let me know on the App Service blog. Uh, drop me an email. Get me, catch me on uh, Twitter. Um, if this bit was a bit too late for you, if you you, you know said, uh, this is great stuff. I want to do this, but I don't know how to get started. We have a learning path, and we have them for all the clients. So it's not just ASP.NET. It's not just Xamarin. It's all the clients, all the servers. Uh, you can get that at ak.ms slash learnmobile. And finally, my biggest source of information when I was learning Xamarin was the Xamarin guides. They have sample code. Um, they have uh, walkthrough guides, uh, a lot of things here. developers.xamarin.com slash guides. So it looks like I've got about 15 minutes uh, uh, left. I'm, I'm quite happy to take uh, questions, show you some more. Or you can watch me code and trying to figure out the uh, UWP bug. Um, it's probably very exciting. Debugging is always the, uh, is always the exciting bit. But if there's uh, no other uh, questions, um, thank you very much for viewing this. And I hope to see you enjoy the uh, rest of the program.